Good morning. Welcome to Blackberry Ridge again. We're out in the garden and um, I had been taking, move this slowly, I've been taking from this pile, this pile is almost gone, and I have all the cardboard laid down up in this corner um, between those two apple trees. Um, got an apple tree right there and an apple tree right there. Okay, so two apple trees. And I got the cardboard laid up there. So that's what I had been doing this morning. And in between taking little breathers, um, I had been coming over here um, to my bucket, um, sitting for a minute or two, catching my breath and just resting a little bit, and um, looked around and I saw some llama beans that needed to be picked. So I was searching through the lima beans, and I wait until they turn brown. If we can get over here. Here's some. These are really close to the ground. Here's some that are green. And these are the ones that grow up or growing up the corn. Um, so what I was doing was picking lima beans, and I wait until they get like this. So you see this one's it's brown and just snap it off like that and you hear there's some beans that are in there so snap it off and then I put it in my pocket but there's briars there Whoop. there's some briars so just looking around more llama beans and popping them off that easy and I just been stuffing them in my pocket so let's go to the house for a minute and we're going to discuss a couple things we're going to discuss um, how Umbria one of her chores is to um, shell the shell the beans so she's going to show you how easy it is to shell the beans and then I'm going to show you how to make a really really easy super super easy um, fruit fly trap it's so easy I'm almost ashamed to show it to you we'll be back in a few okay we're back up on the porch the deck area that's between our houses here and as you can see, Ambria is hard at work. What are you doing, Ambria? I'm shelling lima beans. So you want to show the people how you shell lima beans? I take it, put my fingers, pinch. Sometimes I have to force it open. What did you just out. do with your fingers? They didn't see what you just did with your fingers. I popped them out. Okay. Shh. Open. Escapee! <laughs> Escapee! <clears throat> so very good. Pardon me, I have to go to the room. While we're waiting on Ombre to come back, I thought that I would just do a little update on our hydroponic system that we have set up. Now, this is a system that anybody can do and if you're interested in it we do have a couple of videos on how to make the containers and how to set up the drain or what to do if you don't want to set up the drain um, these started out as um, little pieces of the other little tomato plants that we had pulled off and um, we had set them into dirt and we had rooted them and then uh, we put them in the perlite and they were much smaller plants now at one point our goats figured out a way of getting up here and they knocked all the tomatoes off that we had or a lot of the tomatoes off that we had and so we just collected the tomatoes that they had knocked off and we put them up on the banister here to uh, try to ripen a little bit um, these here 
that are the round globe type tomatoes are Adkinson. Um, they are an heirloom. And these here that are the more pear shaped or um, the Roma type shape, um, those are the super Italian paste tomatoes, um, which I absolutely love the super Italian paste tomatoes. They just come out in globs. They're very prolific, and we just love them. So, this is the one that we just stuck in uh, just a water um, with the grow solution in it that the cow had broken off. And as you can see, it's got some fruit on it. So, just a little update. They are doing really, really well. They've got fruit on them that is turning red. Uh, lots of fruit on it that is um, green, blossoming. Now, what I do is that um, since these are so close together, I don't want them getting just off foliage. So I am going to go in here and the little bits and pieces I was talking about of the tomatoes that we started these from are called suckers. And so what I will do will be I will come in here and I will break these suckers off because I don't want a whole lot of foliage around here. These tomato plants are only 11 inches apart. And so I want to let air circulation get in here. But they are doing wonderful. There's some tiny little blossoms here. So this plant right here is probably... Um, these plants are probably be between two and two and a half foot tall at this point. Okay, let's continue. We'll, we'll wait on Ombre just a few more minutes. Saturdays are a very busy time for us here on the homestead. We take Sunday off as a day of rest. That means that I don't do anything unless I absolutely have to do it. So that means getting everything ready for the animals getting our food cooked for the extra day, making sure that everything is taken care of so that we can, at sundown tonight, through sundown tomorrow, just relax. So while we're still waiting on Umbria, just a little relaxing moment with the goats. Okay, people, what I'm going to show you, like I said, is so simple. I feel almost embarrassed to show you. I mean, it's just so common sense and so simple. And it's something that every year we end up making at least one of these. So I figured maybe somebody else needed them, needed to make one. And our house, and I don't know why, but we always end up with fruit flies in the house. Now, remember, we don't have air conditioning, so we do have screens and screen doors that type of thing and so for whatever reason somehow we always end up with those little nasty fruit flies and believe me the only thing that is more aggravating and obnoxious than a fruit fly is a sweat bee and when they sting you because they're coming after you for that little bit of salt that you've got in your sweat they hurt and they leave a welt so anyway sweat bees, bees are pretty obnoxious but fruit flies are right up there with them now um, we don't buy a lot of soda but when we do, the jugs get used for all kinds of things. We use the jugs for uh, collecting water, for planting plants in, and for making fruit fly traps. Um, so what you're going to need is you're going to need some type of a bottle. And this is a 2 liter bottle. But you can use a smaller bottle if that's what you have. And I'm going to use a knife with a sharp point on it. And I'm just going to go to where it goes from narrow to where it starts going to thick. Because you need it to be where it's at the thick part. And I'm just going to cut it right above where this band is here. So just stab in. They cut really easy. They don't have to be cut pretty or even or anything like that. If you're one of the people where things have to be pretty and even, then make it so. But for us, this is something we're going to use for just a few days. And then we're going to we're going to um, throw the liquid that we're going to use into the garden um, and the compost. Uh, or, or throw it down and let the, butt, uh, let the chickens have it. So, uh, here we go. 
So you want it to be in two sections. Okay. That's the hardest part of this whole thing. No. So, as I said before, cutting the two pieces in half are the hardest part of putting this whole thing together. Look, there's already a fruit fly right there, or a gnat that's, that's humming towards it. Because it just draws them towards it. Okay, so now we're going to take, we're going to take off the lid. Because we need to make a hole for them to be able to fly down in through. And we're going to take, and we're just going to turn it inside out. Alright, inside out. And then you take some kind of a tape. And you can use masking tape, duct tape, scotch tape, whatever you have. Just some kind of a tape. This happens to be some packing tape that I have handy. And you can buy the ones in the store, but they don't work as well as this. Thank you, Umbria. And then we're just going to take the tape. And this does not have to be pretty. I mean, this is just to kind of hold the two layers together and make it to where they can't escape. You see there's a little, little gap that's right there. So we want to make sure that we cover that up with tape. You might have to wrestle with the tape sometimes, but it's worth it. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, now the trap is made. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can see the bottle down inside the middle there. <clears throat> okay. Then what I do, let's put the tape to the side here. Then what I do is that this happens to be some pineapple juice that we had left over. So I just need to have some kind of an attractant, something that's really going to draw them to it. So I just put the pineapple juice in there. You can put a little bit of um, apple cider vinegar. And then later I will add, I'm going to add just a little bit of water to that. And that's all there is to make in the trap. They'll fly in. They fly into this hole. And then they can't find their way back out. And let me show you how well this works. Now, warning dead bugs are going to be shown so anybody who has an aversion to seeing a dead bug now's the time <laughs> to, to to turn off this video <laughs> okay so here's one that we've had going now for several days and this is um i put just a smidge of apple cider vinegar in here a little bit of the pineapple juice that we had or not pineapple uh pear it was pear juice that we had and <laughs> Um, the rest is full of water, and so like I say, they fly down in through this hole here, and then they can't find their way back out, and can you see how many dead bugs are in the bottom? Yeah. Okay, there's, so there's dead fruit flies. All those little black dots there is a dead fruit fly. So, and there's even a regular fly that's in there. So these things work really, really, really well. Now, do not put these right on the table where you're going to be sitting, where the fruit flies might be at the moment. What you want to do is that you want to move them away from your living area and put them someplace that you want them to go towards. So um, the, first, the first couple of hours we put this on the table, and all the fruit flies in the world, I think, ended up there at the table. Um, and we had been processing a lot of vegetables. Uh, I'm not sure if we got these things when we brought in some bananas or when we brought in the um, apples. The apples, yeah, we, we had apples. Um, and there was a, a couple spooled apples that was in the bag. That's probably where we got these fruit flies. Um, we also did get a small bag of potatoes. So they might have come in in that small bag of potatoes. Um, never, never know. You just got to get rid of them. Um, so what we did was we ended up putting these in the far corner away from where we our living space was where we were going to be walking around because we didn't want these bugs up in our face. And I came back the next day and it was like this. The bottom just covered and all those dead fruit flies. So anyway, hope this helps. God bless America. Pray for our country. It's going to be a wonderful day. Y'all have a good Sunday. We'll see you next week. Vivian Ann and Ambria, who's feeling better on the side of the mountain in northeast Tennessee. And, th and thank you for watching. Yes. Tell somebody about us. Bye, y'all.